Hello, this is Ram 55, and we are coming at you with uh, round six of uh, our Melge's Round Robin. Today, the United States is going up against Great Britain. We have one of the best boats, the USA, with uh, four wins and one loss, going up against Great Britain, who's still looking for their first win. Here's the statistics on the boat. Once again, Great Britain has a slightly better hull, but the United States has better spinnaker, sails, and crew. So the way we've been sailing lately, we've been doing well. Hopefully we will continue to our winning streak and do well against Great Britain. So the weather is rainy here in Rio de Janeiro. The wind is out of the west at 4-7. And once again, 4-7 is high wind moderate gale, near gale, with wind speeds 31 to 38 miles an hour, 28 to 33 knots. Once again, we have some pretty bad visibility. The race starts with us on the race side of the starting line, and we have to get across that line onto the pre-start side before, two minutes before the start. So there's the Breton boat moving pretty well towards the starting line. We're both on starboard tack. And this is a button on the bottom left on the radar screen. I didn't realize I could do this until just recently. I hit that and now you can see what the course is. So it gives me no excuse for messing up now. You can see we go straight ahead to the first mark, and make a 90 degree right hand turn through a gate, back to that same mark and back to the gate. And that's the way the race should develop. So right now we're just maneuvering on the pre-race side of the start line to get a, a good position on our opponents and once again there's the starting or the uh, racing line the uh, starting line is the green line on the bottom we go uh, up to the top make a 90 degree right to the gate and then repeat that twice so now we're just kind of maneuvering back and forth now on this course it's kind of unusual because as i've told you before Sailboat races almost always start with a windward leg. In other words, you go into the wind for the first leg. And uh, this one, we're actually on a beam reach, which is kind of unusual. It kind of makes for a weird start, because the favorite start now is a port tack. Uh, you'd be kind of crazy to actually be doing a start tack, because you can't go across the line on that uh, heading. So we've got about a minute and 12 seconds left before the start of the race, and I'm just following the British boat. I don't want to get too far away from them. Uh, see what kind of tactics they have up their sleeve. We saw our sail luffing just a little bit as we were getting too far toward the uh, direction of the wind, and luffing means that the wind is hitting the sail on both sides doesn't produce its maximum power. So now I'm just tacking on the back of the British boat. And as far as right of way is concerned here, we're both on a starboard tack, but the boat clear behind, which is me in this case, has to stay clear of the boat clear ahead. You see on the radar screen, that's uh, depicted by a red boat. Uh, the British boat is red. That's a red light. I have to watch out for them. Once again, bottom right is a compass green arrow being the true wind direction. Excuse me, the blue arrow is the true wind direction. The green arrow is the apparent wind angle. And the yellow um, arrow is the current direction. So you have to take all those things into consideration. Okay, so we're started. Once again, we're both on the port tack and we're both pretty evenly matched. We haven't crossed the starting line yet. we have now. This is going to be, as I said, a beam reach. That means the uh, wind is coming 90 degrees off the left side of our boats. I am upwind of the uh, British boat. And in the rules of sailing, if you're both on the same tack, the windward boat, which would be me because I'm upwind, has to steer clear, stay clear of the leeward boat, or the Great Britain boat in this case. So both maneuvering towards that uh, first mark, which is dead ahead. Our boats are doing about 10.3 knots. Now here's a little advanced piloting. If you look down at the bottom at the uh, uh, 
uh, navigation bar, the course to the next mark is 003 degrees. Our course over the ground is 360. If I make the course over the ground equal to the course to the next mark, it will take me right there. That will take into account side slip of the boat as well as current. So you can use that to uh, accurately navigate to the next point. So now we have overlap. And that brings up an interesting situation. At overlap, approaching a two-boat distance from the mark, which is depicted by that orange circle uh, down on the radar screen, I cannot pinch the Great Britain boat off. If we, if we have overlap inside of that circle, I have to give them room to round the mark. Now, they're going off to the left there, and I think I realized why the first couple races I won by such a large margin. I actually thought that they were sailing a different course, but in reality, the wind is 4-7. The artificial intelligent skippers aren't so intelligent, and they have a real booger of a time dealing with strong winds and the spinnaker. And you can see they are sailing off at some weird angle, and they just can't control their boat. The spinnaker up and the wind behind us, it really wants to blow the, the boat over to the side, and the curvature of the hull wants to turn in the opposite direction, causing what's called a brooch, where the boat basically trips over itself. It takes a lot of concentration and a strong arm on the tiller to maintain your course. Once again, there's two arrows out there in the distance. One on the right is green, the one dead ahead is orange. Those are pointing to two markers which depict the gate. A gate in sailing means you can go around either of those marks, right or left side, and you are legal to keep going. You don't have to pass just one like you do with the normal mark. Go in between those marks and you can round either one and then proceed on with the uh, to the next mark. So, of course, to the next mark down at the bottom is 085 course over the ground is 092 and again you can use that as a high-tech way to make sure you're on course there's that orange uh, circle turned red when I was inside the two boat length uh, distance indicating that if I was overlapped with another boat I have to give them room I also dropped my spinnaker early I wanted to make sure that um, the spinnaker was down and the jib was up before I rounded that mark look at their um, British boat having real trouble with their spinnaker there if they just dropped it around on, uh, on the jib. Anyways, um, when you're rounding a mark going downwind, you want to drop your spinnaker a little bit early because you cannot go upwind with that sail. It's strictly a downwind sail. So get your spinnaker down early, hoist the jib so that when you round the mark you can make a nice tight turn and head back toward the next mark as soon as possible. So right now the wind speed's 35 knots. Got the crew on the starboard side of the boat. We're on a starboard tack and we are just beating against the wind. And looking at the top, we have a 44 second lead over the British, British boat because artificial intelligence doesn't handle these strong winds well. One of the drawbacks of the game, I wish they, uh, they were smarter skippers and sailed uh, better races. And in fact, I'm setting up my own race courses and doing it with a multiple uh, boats in the fleet. So rather than match racing one on one, I'm racing against seven other boats. And believe me, I've got it set to a different level of skill for the artificial intelligence skippers. And I have yet to win a race. So I'll be uh, filming some of those regatta races and uh, posting them as well once I get through this uh, round robin series in the Melge. Some more advanced uh, piloting techniques. You can see that the um, apparent wing angle is a negative 30 down the bottom right-hand corner of the dashboard. That's about as close to the wind as this boat can sail. Any closer to the wind and you lose speed, you lose power. So 30 degrees is about as close as I can get. So using that number, I can tack on the other direction, about 30 degrees off the wind in the other direction. That makes a total angle of about 60 degrees. Now, with that information, I can kind of plot when to tack so that I can reach the next mark. And I'm generally using, a, um, rather than 30 degrees, I'm using about 40 degrees for my estimate, so about an 80 degree angle. And the way I do that is look at my 
heading HDG down on the uh, dashboard. It's 229 degrees right now. And 80, 80 degrees to the right right now, if I wanted to tack to the right, 80 degrees on top of that would be 309. I can use that by looking at the course to the next marker. When the course to the next marker reaches 309, assuming the wind doesn't shift, that's the time to tack. Just saw a glimpse of the uh, British boat off there in the distance. So now that my heading is 223, 80 degrees to the right of that would be 303. So when the course of the next mark gets to be 303, it's time to tack, and that's assuming that the wind doesn't shift. Another bit of advanced navigation, if you look at the true wind direction, which right now is 261, and the course of the next mark is 273, the wind direction is coming from the left of the uh, course to the next mark. I should actually be on the opposite tack right now, um, as it will take me closer to the mark than this tack will. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tack over to the right side. It's going to bring me a little bit closer to the mark than I was on the other direction. So now I'm on the port tack. Crew's balancing the boat over there on the port side. And you can see the uh, British boat off in the distance there. We have a pretty comfortable lead. Uh, because I'm on the port tack, I'm going to have to make at least two more tacks. One back to the left put me on a starboard tack, and then one back to the right to round the mark. I just love the graphics on this game. You know, the wind's howling right now at about 30 knots, and you can see the white frothy foam on the top of the waves as they come screaming by. And yeah, the raindrops are huge. I mean, those are like golf ball, baseball size raindrop marks on the water but the graphics kind of look like it would really be out on the water. So now I'm back on a starboard tack. Get that arrow turned green, winds at the optimum angle. My heading is 222. Two, two. 80 degrees to the right of that is 302. When the course to the next mark gets to be about 302, it's time to tack and I can fetch that mark. Wind just shift, so 80 degrees is now 311. So when the Mark gets to a heading of 311. It's time to tack, and I can fetch that mark. It's right about now. Bingo. Perfect. So you can use that information in the dashboard to determine when it's time to tack. Again, using the course over the ground, we'll take into consideration side slip from the wind and the current. And if you can make your course over the, over the ground equal to the course to the next mark, you're going to go right to that mark. I'm waiting right here for the British boat to go by, and then I'm going to pop my spinnaker, and right now it's just a mad dash to the uh, finish. So we had about a 44-second lead, I think, uh, when we uh, rounded the, uh, the gate. Let's see how we did as the uh, British boat rounds the mark. So they are now rounding the mark. As soon as they are heading back this way, we'll see what kind of a lead we have now. 30 seconds. I actually trimmed 14 seconds off of our time, so we must have lost time by just tacking back and forth a few times. So course of the next mark, 091 degrees down the bottom dashboard. Course over the ground is 076, 074 degrees right now. And at this point, uh, all I want to do is sail through the gate once again. That yellow arrow to, arrow to the right is pointing to the center of the gate. What I'm looking for is the green uh, marks, which define where that gate is. And there's one just a little bit off to the right side of the nose. And there's one way over to the right. So I can jive. You can see that green mark over there on the left side of the screen. I can jive, head toward that uh, arrow, and definitely pass through the middle of the gate. You can see how difficult it was there keep the boat tracking uh, with the wind blowing off the side with the spinnaker up and strong winds like we have right now it was a handful to uh, keep the boat under control so we have a huge lead as once again the AI skipper is having a real difficult time keeping his boat going downwind and this strong wind with the spinnaker so here we are about to cross the finish line and another victory for the United States 
our fifth win in a row. We did that race in 10 minutes and 55 seconds. And after round five, the United States beats Great Britain, Spain beats France, Spain's a good boat too, we gotta watch them. Japan beats New Zealand, Australia beats China, Switzerland beats Brazil, and Italia beats Deutschland. Great Britain still looking for their first win. The United States is on a roll now. We've won five races in a row and we are tied with Spain at the top of the fleet. Australia, Italy, Switzerland, are tied for second. Australia and New Zealand uh, tied for sixth. China all by them. They're lonesome with uh, two wins. Brazil and Germany with one win each and Great Britain still looking for their first victory. So that's it. Round six after of uh, round six of 11 in the Melch round robin racing. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, We'll be back on the water here soon with round seven. We'll see you back on the water. This is Ram 55. Appreciate you watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like. Leave some comments. I'd like to get uh, your feedback, and I will try to answer um, if I have the time. And thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.